the Echo Hawk home. I personally believe in like a cultural and spiritual call to doing this kind of art. Each stitch. I did these handprints in the color of the native medicine wheel. Each shade. Red is the color of prayer. Comes with a story. It's also a symbol of the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls movement. And sometimes a reminder about the plan. These kids along with my own, they know that if their aunties or their mom ever went missing, that we would never have left them on purpose. It's a plan Abigail Echohawk of the Seattle Indian Health Board says every Native woman she knows has had to make what her family should do if she were to disappear. They would need to um, make sure that somebody looked for us. For my children, they know that my handprints are on the dresses. They know that they would be able to take my fingerprints to the police. Do you ever remember not knowing about this? No. We can be in danger People get lost by not telling people where they are and not being careful. They don't come home and you don't get to be with your family anymore. Here in Washington, Indigenous people are going missing or being murdered at the second highest rate in the country. Seattle itself ranks as the city with the highest number of cases nationwide. According to the Seattle Indian Health Board, compared to white women, Indigenous women in Washington are four times more likely to go missing. Right now, state patrol records show 126 Indigenous people in the state who aren't accounted for. Research has shown us that the primary perpetrator of the acts of violence against indigenous women and girls are white men, predominantly white men who come onto reservations or target indigenous women within urban settings. With fewer resources, Native American families are forced to take matters into their own hands and form plans for their loved ones. I have actually posted something on Facebook. If I ever go missing, know that uh, I didn't do it on purpose. Come look for me. I love my family and friends. I wouldn't just disappear. Nana Bluen has spent the past two years looking for her own sister, 39-year-old Mary Johnson. Mary was last seen on the Tulalip Reservation on Thanksgiving 2020. We don't want her flame to go out, so we're trying everything we can to keep her name and face out there. Mary's sisters, Nona and Jerry, believe she may have been a victim of human trafficking. Yeah, what do you tell your kids about where she is? I just say, um, Aunt Mary's trying to find her way home. And uh, my little, our eldest daughter, she goes like this all the time. You know, and, and she's like, um, Mom, can we email the chief and ask where she is? <laughs> Mom, why aren't they looking for her? No. How come she's not home yet? She can't be that lost. And I don't want to tell them that she's missing. So that's what I tell them. Fire Trail Road. This is the road what Mary was seen walking on the day she went missing. We believe that she trusted somebody, got in a vehicle, and has never been seen since. Tulela Police Chief Chris Sutter sees Mary's case as a continuation of what's been happening to Indigenous people in America for centuries. Historically, the wrongs that have been committed, including abductions and murders and rapes and all, all forms of sexual assaults and, and other types of abuses, have gone unpunished and unprosecuted. This has been perpetuated for centuries. And it's because of that history, Chief Sutter has talked to his own children about the plan. My children have all heard dad preach to them, be aware of their surroundings and their situation and don't trust people. So I wanted to do this in honor of the families. Back in the Echo Hawk home. Do you guys know that? We would never leave you. Mm -hmm. Abigail hopes future generations won't need to prepare for their own abductions or murder by having a plan. Having a plan is part of the hopelessness that's experienced by our communities. It's not something any of us should have to do. Until then, Abigail creates hope from unlikely sources, like these flowers on her latest art piece. And really thinking about every single person as a blossom, as beloved life. When the Seattle Indian Health Board asked for PPE during the pandemic, the federal government sent them these body bags instead. How many body bags do you have? Got like 22 left. 22 
body bags. Now Abigail uses them to create art that highlights the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women. One of her works made from these body bags has even been featured in Vogue. My artwork is a form of healing. She's also now using them to keep the traditions of her culture alive for the next generation. It it's cool because most people are not able to be a part of the culture. The thing I love about it is that for these kids, this is just who they are. It's going to be pretty. Creating hope and beauty from darkness. There is hope on healing the past so that we have full healing for our community so their children's children don't experience the same things that I did, that they did, where something like this is never out of a body bag again. I refuse to let the hopelessness be all the conversation.